this video is used to demonstrate a more complex part and also a bit more of a complex uh, machining or CNC programming um, part setup. So basically uh, what I want you to do is just watch this video and on your projects you're going to follow similar steps which means you'll have a part, you have to come up with a way of building that part, then you have to orientate it in 3D space and I want you to start importing uh, the mill specifications which is the table, any plates you're going to use and uh, a graphical representation of the maximum positioning of the mill which means XYZ position. So just follow along with this and take notes because basically you're going to just replace the part with your part and the uh, fixturing with your fixturing. So here we go. I chose to design or to build a center board for a sailboat. So the, the PDF you're looking at here, um, while not scaled properly now, if you print it one to one, it'll actually be one to one. And so this is not to scale this little part right here. It just gives you an overall of the blade, the center board itself. And so by looking at this, um, this cross section right here is a straight cross section out. So that's just a simple extrude. And then from that cross section to these cross sections, you can see it tapers in but it also becomes smaller. So each of these locations rep is represented by these cross sections that I'm pointing to now. And they're at a specific location. So from the reference line, this is at 800 millimeters, 900, 1,000, 1,100, 1,200, etc. So what I ended up doing is creating planes basically from this reference point and I, s and I built planes and then built sections on those planes. So if you go over to SOLIDWORKS, I start with plane one and then offset each one of those and you can see that I've, I've labeled them 800, 900, etc. And then I put on uh, the exact uh, cross sections and then verify them, verify them by plotting one to one. So you can see I built them and you can see there's a little uh, vertical line there and that's the center line right here which is an alignment line. They're all, all the sections are aligned that keeps them oriented properly. And uh, so basically, basically that's how I made my um, blade. So first off, get the part built and, and verify that it's accurately uh, constructed. And then, uh, so now I'm going to uh, zoom in on this and talk more about the manufacturing of this. This center board is created out of structural foam, marine foam. And what that means is, is that it's a lightweight material uh, with a little stiffness, but it's not really that strong. It's kind of brittle, actually. And what you need to do to make it strong is to add something on the outside. And typical for this kind of construction is um, basically using uh, fiberglass and epoxy or various other things. Uh, in this case, it'll be fiberglass and epoxy. And what that means is, is it's called the schedule, the layup schedule. And the layup schedule means this surface right here, call it the A surface is what the customer will see when it's all done, painted, and on the show, showroom floor or ready to be purchased. For manufacturing, I need to rebate or recess this because I'm going to build it back up with fiberglass and epoxy. Okay? So the, the layup schedule says to allow for 30 thousands of uh, rebate or recess. So if this is the final surface, I need to recess it about 30 thousands in. So take all the cross sections, take this whole shape, and cut it 30 thousandths smaller so when I build it back up it comes back to the final size. Okay, And that's what we're going to do. So that's the part in camming that you're going to discover, you're going to learn. And so here we go. Uh, what we're going to do is I've built it, I've verified it. When I make my tool path I'm going to cut it with a negative 30 thousandths so it cuts below all around on all sides. And uh, that's the plan. So now I'm going to simply expand this so we can have a more of a conversation in SOLIDWORKS. I'm going to turn off viewing planes because you don't need to see these anymore. And I have it here because I want to import or represent um, other parts of this process of CAD CAM and milling. And what I want to do is I want to show you or I'll basically vis visually show but also the camming software will use this and that is the stock. The stock, this is the, car, the core material, which is that light material, of which when I'm done cutting it will be this blade. Okay? So the CAD CAM software needs the final product, the starting product, 
and um, any fixturing that you don't want to machine or you don't want to hit. So what I want to do is I want to add. So I need this material mounted inside the mill. And because I'm going to cut the whole top of it, I need to think of a way of holding it underneath. And I've done this already. And I'm basically going to uh, put a machining plate underneath it. So that machining plate, I'm going to drill through clearance holes and clear and, and uh, drill and, and tap into this material. Actually, I'll probably just screw wood screws in there because it it's that kind of material. Um, so basically, you can see the holes there. If I go into wireframe, you can you can see that the blade only comes to here. So I will only use these screws, and that'll hold it down. So that's that's a good plan. Now I need to take this plate and mount it in the machine in the mill. So I have a model that represents the mill, and I'll go ahead and show that. And what you see here is, of course, the table with the T-slots. Okay, And I've arranged my machining plate to line up with the slots with some flexibility so I can move it around for alignment. And looking straight down at the top, this light gray transparent box is the maximum XYZ movement of the mill. So basically, all my toolpath has to stay within that box. And all of this information is critical for the setup person. They have to know from something, the edge of something they know, like the table or the XY movement of the uh, table of the machine itself, come over here, come in a hundred thousands, and that's where that um, stock starts, okay, for example. Or from the back of the maximum of the Y, come in so much, and that's where that one is. And that just gives them a good starting point so they don't bump outside of the machine limits. So again, this is my part. Your part will be in here. And I want you to come up with a stock, come up with a way of fixturing it. In this case, I'm using a, you know, a plate. And I'll screw it from the bottom and then mount this plate to the table. And then I want you to represent the limits of, the, of your particular machine, whichever one you're uh, programming for, and so that you have a visual aid to help you. And then, and that's pretty much it for fixturing and getting yourself set up on the mill. From here, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the mill or just not, just not view it anymore. When I cut this part, again, I'm going to cut it with a negative 30 thousandths recess because I'm going to build it back up with uh, fiberglass and epoxy. And that's how that part is going to get manufactured. And uh, you'll have to uh, work on your own uh, the processes and operations to complete your part. Uh, in this case, I'll need to cut this. And because the other side is exactly the same, I will simply, uh, in this case, I will probably cut it and then cut witness two edges and flip the part over, mirror my program, and then uh, cut the other side with a reference, a Z reference, so that they uh, have the correct thickness. And that will generate that part. Thank you very much, and uh, talk with you later on your specific jobs, your projects.